Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Rupes LHR15 ES Mark II Polisher. Leo comes down, Leo comes down, Leo comes down in the ground. Leo comes down, boy, or I will lay you down. Okay guys, so welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this machine here. As I said, it's the Rupes LHR 15 ES Mark II Polisher. Okay guys, so the first thing to say about this tool, the, the, the basic thing about this tool is it's a free spinning dual action polisher, okay, with a 15 millimeter offset of the free spinning bearing on the main axle. So you get a 15 millimeter throw on the orbit if you like, okay. Rupes were the first company to play around with changing the throw size on the standard kind of like DAs and increasing the size to solve the problem of upping the aggression kind of but doing it in a safe way so that you're still getting all the benefits of a dual action polisher the fact that you're not going to be able to install kind of swirls and holograms and overheat the paintwork but by still kind of keeping it safe enough that you don't introduce the, those risks of kind of cutting through the clear coat too quickly okay so it's a safe machine with a slightly higher level of aggression than other forms of DAs with lower throws on them Okay, so some very basic inf bits of information that you're going to need on this tool. It has a orbits per minute range of 2,500 up to 5,800, okay? And that, that speed rating is shown on a nice graph on the front of the tool. So while you're actually working on the tool, you can tr translate the number setting into or orbits per minute a little bit better, which is going to help you. Just one improvement, I think, from the Mark II over the original Mark I. Okay, this tool supports the use of the 125mm Rupes flex flexible backing plate up to the 150mm Rupes flexible backing plate, or in non-metric terms, that's about 5 to 6 inches plate diameter. And those Rupes supported backing plate options will support a pad size of 140mm up to 165mm, or in non-metric terms, 5.5 inches up to 6.5 inches. So that pri primarily this tool is designed to use with medium to large size pads, okay? Another functional or specification change from the Mark II variant through to the Mark I was another 30% more power on the tool, which is supposed to help alleviate issue with the pad stalling or the pad bogging down, which was a, a criticism that was thrown at the Mark I, but I never got a chance to use that tool, so I don't know if it's a fair criticism or an unfair one, but this tool has more power to try and to try and reduce that symptom. Another feature of the Mark II tool is this rubber rest on the top of the tool. I've not seen that on any other tools, okay, and it's a really good idea. It's a simple idea, and it's just to allow you to put that tool down on a flat surface or a worktop. Wouldn't put it down on, a, on any paint surface still because it's a heavy tool, but you put it on a flat surface and it will stop the tool tipping over and your pad making contact with that surface and picking up kind of grit and dirt potentially. So I love that feature. I wish that was on more tools because there's nothing worse than a tool which rolls over and you kind of you kind of can't put it down on a flat surface without kind of worrying about the pad picking up dirt. So that's cool. So one other important thing about this tool is the weight, 2.2 kilograms, which is relatively light. And that can be one of the most important things and one of the differences between the more high-end professional tools and some of the cheaper offerings that are out there can be weight. That, especially with some of the cheaper kind of rotary offerings that are out there that are still sturdy tools. They've not been able to get the weights down. And when you're doing this, doing a lot of machine polishing day in, day out, the weight of the tool is a very important kind of fact and it's something you want to kind of minimize. So it's a, it feels 
feels like a, quite a light tool to me, 2.2 kilograms, so there you go. The tool has some really good ergonomic features, especially with this kind of integrated kind of bail handle on the end that's got the rubber grip underneath so that you really get a good grip of the, of the machine. It's not gonna kind of slip out your hand, especially when it's on the clear coat and operating. You want a good grip on this machine. And again, a kind of rubberized feel to the, to the trigger as well. So you, that trigger's less prone to slipping if you get any kind of polish on your fingers or anything like that. So they thought, they've really thought about where to put those bits of rubber to try and make the tool easier to hold. And again, that rubber helps to reduce and lower the vibration that's coming out of the tool. Okay guys, there's two electronic features that the Rupes LHR 15ES Mark II has that some other tools don't have. The first one is a soft start or a graduated start to help reduce sling and just make when you're starting up the tool and putting the power down, it's a slightly more smoother kind of experience than just some of the other tools that deliver that, all of that power instantly. I like that, okay? A second cool feature on this tool that you won't find on every single DA that's out there is the tool is able to maintain its speed, okay? So it's able to monitor its speed. I don't know if it's monitoring, I, I suspect it's monitoring the oscillation or the orbit speed. And if you apply more pressure and slow that orbit speed round, the tool is able to adjust the speed and maintain the speed that you've got set. So that's a quite a cool feature for, for knowing that the tool is gonna to be consistent, okay? Or orbiting at a consistent speed. So that's a handy feature. Another thing about the tool is it's well known for being able to maintain its temperature and not overheating, which is really important. So it's got kind of like a flow control air mechanism where it draws air in through one set of vents and that air flows over the motor to keep it cool and then out of another set of vents on the, on the tool. So you won't have to worry about using the tool for too long and overheating it. It's, it's, it, it, it will not overheat is the, is the short answer on that. The next step for me for doing this video was to get to get a tool and get the loan of a tool from somewhere. So I tried tried emailing around a few places and they didn't want to go for it. And I saw Clean and Shiny were um, were uh, stocking it. So I pinged them an email late late during the week and and um, I got a reply back straight away, which is always a good sign when when a company are, 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 are working late and monitoring our emails at, like, after nine o'clock at night, which is which is fantastic. And uh, it was a reply from John Hull, the guy that owns Clean and Shiny, and he, he owns Detailing World. You've probably heard of the name. He owns Wax Stocks and organizes and brings us Wax Stock. And Clean and Shiny also do kind of high end detailing as well. And John's just said, give him a call and we'll sort something out. So I gave John a call and uh, it was really nice to chat to this guy because I've heard his name mentioned before, Bert knows him and he's, you know, he's been around the detailing scene for so long. He's almost like the, the, the godfather of the UK detailing scene. Clean and Shiny are actually up, located up in Aldershot, so it's not too far from where I am in sun, sunny Bognor Regis, only about 40 minutes up the road. So I thought um, it'd be a good, good opportunity to drive up there and meet John and thank him for agreeing to loan me the tool. So we uh, swung up to Clean and Shiny a couple of days ago and uh, it was like it was like Aladdin's cave seeing, because Clean and Shiny are, are uh, you know, an online reseller of kind of a whole large range of detailing products. You'll have probably heard of them if you're in, in the UK. They're one of the big big companies that have been doing it for, for about 15 years. Their warehouse is full of detailing goodies from all of the, like, all of the cool brands, you know, your G-Technics, your Geons, Shoal, Auto Finesse, Dodo Juice, I got I saw Auto Glim stuff there. That's mentioned in about seven brands, but I think they do sort of well over 40 brands, all the accessories and everything. So they've got an Aladdin's cave of goodies up there, as well as all of their kind of clean and shiny resale stuff. Clean and shiny are also a detailing company that do kind of high end detailing. And uh, John showed me um, this clear bra system he's got up there, which is fantastic. Something I've something completely new to me I, you know it's very specialized you can't the the weekend warrior the guy in his garage can't use this you need special machinery that stores all the templates um, to cut the clear brass for all the various models of cars out there so it's expensive kind of high-end stuff but it was amazing john had it on his um on his own car and showed me that you never know that it's got this kind of protective 
clear bra coating on it and um, was telling me about some of the things, you know, if you get, if you get scratches in the clear bra, it's kind of got self-healing properties there. So you can kind of heat it up and, and those scratches will disappear. So they do all sorts of stuff, you know, they, I think they're G-Technic accredited, so they do all the ceramic coatings and uh, they've got all the gear, the, the, the low lifters, the compressors, uh, millions of um, polishing machines and um, that was great to see that. So one other really cool thing they got there, it's got this, so obviously he's got all the kind of stock stuff for clean and shiny, but down in the detailing kind of section, he's got this kind of, it's like the, it's like the holy grail of detailing products. And you open it up and it's full of all these lovely waxes. And he had some of the original kind of like prototype first versions of some legendary waxes from like bouncers and kind of dodo juice and all that sort of stuff so some kind of historical waxes there the, the literally the first ever blends done by these companies so really cool to see all that really cool to chat to uh, john and see the clean and shiny setup uh, so a big thumbs up from me and thank you very much for letting me borrow this tool and it's very nice to meet you and uh, see what you guys do so for this video we had a 15 plate Audi A4 Avant with all original paintwork. Um, so the car's just over a year old. It had a moderate level of kind of scratching and swirl damage, uh, a lot less than I'm used to. I'm used to kind of having to compound older cars that have got a lot heavier kind of damage in them. This had damage there, it needed compounding. Polishing wasn't, wasn't gonna take that level of damage out, but I'd probably describe it as light swirl damage, okay? I got myself a medium cutting pad, the kind of, not the heaviest one that Roops offer, the kind of green cutting pad from the Roops system. So this is a 150 millimeter pad that will fit on the 125 plate that's on the um, polisher I'm borrowing. And their, their standard kind of polishing pad, they do an ultra fine polishing pad or like a jeweling polishing pad that you could use with ultra fine kind of, um, ultra fine abrasives but this is kind of like the Audi paints reasonably hard and this will this standard polishing pad will, will, will work well okay so as always when you're doing machine polishing you need to really thoroughly clean the car so we gave this car a proper um, pre-rinse snow foam because it had a lot of road grime on it um, we shampooed it heavily after shampooing the car and, and going around it, making sure there was no dirt left on those low, low parts and anything we were going to hit with the machine polisher, we then did a, um, we then did a, I went over the car with some um, tar and sap remover from AM Details, which is effective but safe, which is always important. So we sprayed a bit of that on, rinsed off, wiped any residue left because you obviously don't want to leave. Um, solvents on your clear coat for too long so you follow the instructions and that helps to break down any tar and sap that's sit sitting on the paintwork and there was some actually. Um, we then used uh, Corosol to decontaminate the paintwork and, and um, bleed out any fallout that's kind of bonded onto that clear coat that we've talked about before and again there was some, there's quite a lot of trails and I'll overlay the video. We then clay barred the the car, and there was a there was a moderate amount of contaminant. Again, most of it was down near the, behind the wheels and on the back section of the car, front bonnet and the wings had a minimal amount on, but it still needed to be clayed off. Okay, it's very important. So that took a fair few hours. We're talking probably about probably about four hours to get to the stage before we could polish the car. Um, then after all that work claying it, we, we rinsed everything down, we dried the car, and we brought it into the garage to start playing around with the Roops um, polishing machine. So the first thing to say is I didn't really do too much research on, on technique or is there anything special I need to do using the Roops um, LHR 15ES Mark II product, you know, because you sh I don't think really you should have to. If you've been machine polishing a while and you've got a kind of technique that works for you, this is still essentially a dual action polisher with a 15 millimeter more aggressive throw, but essentially it should work the same way as the other machines that are out there, okay? Um, the one bit of due diligence I did was I thought 
because I'm not familiar with the tool, is to use the Rupes pads because you know they've been developed to work with the tool. And the, these, these plates on here have these holes, which I assume is for airflow to try and help keep temperature down on your pads so you don't overheat them. So I thought, well, let's use the proper Rupes pads with the Rupes tool. I used my show range of abrasives, the show concept range, which I really love, you know, my kind of favorite abrasives, if you like, the Shoal S3 Gold XXL high cutting compound, diminishing compound, which, which is really well lubricated and you've probably heard me raving about on the channel. And uh, the S40 um, finishing polish, which I love as well, okay? So I'll put a link in the description for both of those products. You can get them through Clean and Shiny as well. They sell everything. So first of all, I use this tool using the same basic technique that I tend to use with all of my tools, with the exception of perhaps the rotary, okay? And that is, put, you know, prime your pad. I used five dollops, 150 millimeter, brand new pad, so it's gonna need good priming. So I used five dollops there. Laid, laid the product out over the, the first section of panel, which was the bonnet. Um, laid it out, used speed one to work it into a film over all of the product and then cranked up, okay? Now I only cranked up to between three and four because I just wanted to see how this tool will get on at a slower speed. Just, you know, just trying to, trying to relax, putting this on there. Let's not go crazy. Let's see how we get on at three and a half, okay? And just work that product. And I worked it for about two minutes, which is quite short for me because, you know, I always tend to overwork the compounds. You can, you can get away with it with this shell stuff. I worked it for about two minutes, nice and slow, on a low speed, okay? Um, straight away, that first set, on the, on the car took all of the damage out, okay? So the correction capability on this machine is fantastic. The extra correction capability that the longer throw gives you, it, it works, okay? It's tried and trusted. The tool is used by professional detailers all around the world, and it was the first one to do this, okay? So the one thing that I can tell you about it is the extra throw isn't some sort of gimmick. It does give you more correctional capability over a standard kind of dual action polisher, like your Porter Cable, like your, your DAS 6 um, with the eight millimeter throw. This does give you more correction capability, okay? The tool easily coped with the amount of correction I needed to do um, on that particular car, which was light, light to moderate correction on on hard Audi clear coat, okay? Tool. Okay, so the first ticked box for me was in terms of its actual correction capability that we just talked about. The level of damage I had in that car, this tool took out in one set on a reasonably slower setting of about three and a half points on there, which is somewhere, you know, between 3,500 and 4,200 orbits per minute. So you can crank up a lot, lot faster if you want to. At that speed, the tool worked fine and did what I needed it to do. So I just kept on going with that speed. If it works, why, why crank it up? You know, I, I prefer to work at a lower speed if I can. So perhaps if there was a little bit more damage in there, I wanted to get a bit more, you know, bang for my bucks for my set, for my working time, then I could have up, up the speed a little bit to increase the amount that I'm, um, shaving off the clear coat, but I stayed at three and a half thousand. It worked great for me. The next thing I wanted to look at with this tool, okay, is because the Mark I used to get a lot of criticism for stalling and bogging down. And so what that means is you've got the, the orbit, okay, and you're not gonna stop this machine orbiting on its axle, but the spin is, the, 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 the spin, if you like, is free spinning on a bearing. So people were saying that the spin, you were able to stop and slow that spin down on the Mark I, okay? So the extra power that they put in the tool was to try and help reduce that. So this machine for me excelled on any kind of flatter surfaces. So if you're working on the bonnet of your car, if you're doing the roof, if you're doing the flat panels on the door, the, re the rear quarter sections, rear bumpers, anything where there's a bit of panel where you can get that pad into, it works, okay, and it works really well. And the correction on it's lovely. Using the tool is lovely. The level of vibration is lovely. So one thing as well with the tool is that the noise levels from this tool are quite low. The flex tools, which I love, 
style and I'm a big fan of as well. One thing is they can make quite a high pitch kind of jet like noise and you need to get the old kind of ear defenders on there with this. I didn't put the ear defenders on with this. I hate, I hate wearing all that gear, you know. Um, you should, you know. But I, I don't think you'd need to worry too much about wearing ear defenders with this. It's a kind of lower rumbly noise, but it's just it's just less intrusive is probably the word that I'd use. The vibrations that come through the tool are good as well. So it's not kind of really shaking your hands. And if you're using this for six hours a day and you've got a tool with higher vibrations, that's a big factor. So they've thought about some of those more sophisticated things and they've addressed them in the tooling. So it's it's so far it's got ticked tick boxes in definitely giving me the correction capability I'd want from the tool, okay? It's giving me tick boxes with all the ergonomics. It's it's a beautiful thing this tool. It's lovely, you know, I love the little carbon fiber kind of thing on there. It's a really nice tool that you want to kind of keep nice. Um, the flexible backing plate as well gives you a little bit kind of less, what's the word? It's not quite as stiff. If you didn't have the flexible backing plate, it'd be a little bit stiffer and a little bit less forgiving. So the Rupes overall package that you get, you know, gets rid of all those problems that again, you might get if you're looking at other tools and you're playing around with pads and plates and all these decisions that come in there. If you just go with the Rupes systems, they've already kind of thought about all these things. So yeah, tick box, no problem there on the level of correction. Um, tick box with how it finishes down when you're, you're working it to kind of, um, you know, you're doing your polishing stage. Tick box on the noise level and the vibration level. So everything, everything on there is good so far. Now one thing I would say about this tool is just from the nature of, the, of using large pads, 150 millimeter pads are kind of medium, getting to kind of large, I wouldn't generally there's not many times I go beyond the 150 millimeter pad, but when you're using a 150 millimeter pad, okay, the, the weakness of that, and that this could be whether you're using a Rupes tool, whether you're using a rotary with that size, is that a large pad in the small intricate areas kind of will struggle with extreme kind of curves. And it's more, it's not so much of a problem when you've got like a concave curve like that, it will handle that fine. It's more when you've got like an inverted or convex curve that a large pad will struggle. So whenever you're looking to get into kind of detail and buying tools, you know, at some stage you will make the jump from having no polisher to having your first polisher. And then I can tell you now, no matter which tool you pick as your first tool, you will want, the more you get into it, to get a second tool or maybe even a third and a fourth. And the reason you will do that is typically because your kind of standard machine polisher that's designed to use this range of size of pads is great on the flatter surfaces, but you'll want a tool that can then kind of be used on the more intricate surfaces that require smaller kind of plate and pad options. Okay, so one criticism that was thrown at the um, Roops or Rupes, I've got to say that right. Matt Mormon corrected me on the channel, the guy, the Obsessed Garage channel, so you want to check that out if you haven't. But it's pronounced Rupes. So that's the Italian pronunciation, Rupes. So I can't get it right. So if I say Rupes, forgive me. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Okay, yeah, one thing, the criticism. Okay, so the, the Mark I got criticized for being prone for the rotation to stall or slow down, or they can sometimes call it bogging down, okay? So Rupes got around that by upping the power, okay? There's also uh, a well-respected detailer in America called Kevin Brown that, that sells a, a kind of washer mod that allows you to put a bigger distance between the, the spinning backing plate and the kind of the housing, the rubber housing on the tool. I don't know if you need to do that or not. I'd need to use the tool a little bit more. What I can say with any polisher that's running uh, 150 mil plate, uh, 150 mil pad, sorry, like this, that's a reasonably sized pad. It's gonna excel more on flat surfaces. Now, you'll go out there at some point and you'll be looking to buy your first machine polisher if you're, if you're watching this video, there's a good chance of that. So I'm hoping that's what the video is for, you know. Um, if your guy's already got your 
gone and bought your first machine polisher, you already know this, that there will be limitations and that's why most professionals will have a range of kind of machine polishers. Um, now, Rupes sell another tool that complements the LHR 15 uh, ES well and it's called the LHR 75E or the Bigfoot Mini. So it has a, it's a, still a dual action polisher, but it has a 75 mil plate on it. So you could potentially, if you look to buy this as your first tool and you're getting results and you're doing more polishing and realizing the advantages of having a smaller plate system, the 75E will complement this tool really well. And it's one of the kind of, it's one of the most popular combos of machine polishers, the 15, the LHR 15 with the 75E, okay. And um, you will struggle with a 150 mil pad, doesn't matter what tool you're using, whether it be a rotary, a flex rotary, my default, uh, a DAS 6 Pro or a DAS 6 Pro Plus, if you're using that size of plate, when you get really tight convex angles, um, concave angle is less of a problem, less of a problem because you just use less of a pad. But convex, tight convex angle is going to be a struggle with a 150 millimeter pad. That is when this tool is not at its best. This tool is at its best on flatter surfaces. So you, you kind of, if you have the combo, you use the 15 LHR on all the nice flat surfaces, your hood, your bonnet as we call it over here, the correct, the correct way of saying it. <laughs> um, so you use that on the, the kind of flatter surfaces, use it with less pressure. I, during this video, I went over the edges with it, looking for that stall and bog down. I could see evidence of it slowing down with pressure, but not stalling. And I tend to go quite light. I'm not one of these guys that pushes down. I know some people do, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I just tend to, Maybe it's just laziness. I let the weight of the machine basically apply the pressure for me. Um, so that was fine, you know, going over the hood, going over the creases in the hood, no problems there. You know, fine for the uh, roof, no problems there. All the flat panels on the door, the rear quarter panels, fine. In extreme concave areas, like I say, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. If it's got 150 mil plate on it, you're gonna, you're gonna start to realize that you can benefit from using machines that support smaller plates. So be aware of that offering from Rupes, the, um, the LHR 75E Bigfoot Mini, because like I say, it's a classic combo that you will see professional details up and down the country using. One question that gets thrown at me all the time, and machine polishers is a really popular area in, of detailing, and it's an area that perhaps has more complexity involved with it, more options and more choices than, than just what shampoo you're gonna use or how you clean your car. You know, there's all these technical kind of questions that you get around that. And one question I always get thrown at me is, what do I pick as my first polisher? Is it gonna be the Rupes, um, the Rupes LHR 15 or the Rupes LHR 21, so they an even bigger throw, which supports even bigger pad sizes, would it be the Flex 3401 or would it be like a rotary polisher like the Flex um, PE14 slash 2 or the Devault? You know, this people, that's one of the questions I get thrown at me all the time, okay? And you also got the, the Chinese ones, the um, DAD6 Pro Pluses, which are a more entry level on price and they're, they're good, okay? I can understand why they're popular because essentially they do the same thing as the Rupes. You know, they are... They are, they've taken that technology and they've made it, you know, they've used it, um, but they don't contain all the features of this tool, okay? So what I, what I say to people, that generally nowadays, although some people have a bit of an opinion that they definitely want to go down the rotary route and I can't persuade them away from that. What I generally recommend is if it's your first kind of polishing tool, um, the, the a dual action polisher is a, is a really good option to take because it just removes certain risks that we've talked about many times on this channel with the holograms and the kind of edge, edges and stuff and burn through and all that. So it removes that. Um, the next thing is the price point, okay? There are people with budgets, okay? If you've got a budget of 150 quid, then you can't get this tool. If you don't, and the difference, so you've, you've got to pay about an extra 150 quid on top of the, the entry level ones to get this. Well, 150 quid for a tool that you're gonna have for a lifetime isn't a lot of money. And all of the extra features that you get on this tool start to come into play and become more and more desirable with the more polishing that you're gonna do. So I tend to recommend this, this tool 
for anyone that's going to be doing um, a fair amount of polishing so definitely for the professionals you know it doesn't don't need me to re recommend this to professionals they're already out there and they've been using it for years okay and so that just t alone tells you that this is one of the kind of like market leading Ferraris of kind of machine polishers and it is okay um, what I would say is one of the real big advantages of using a DA is a lot of people want to go down the microfiber route, okay, because there's some advantages to using microfiber with the level of cut, okay. So if you are a guy that perhaps wants to explore using microfiber pads more than the foam pads, again, Rupes make it very easy for you. They use the same color codes and all their pads fit their plate options. So you could just go and buy the Rupes microfiber pads use them with this particular tool and get fantastic results. The microfiber pads are not so popular on, on the rotary machines because when you're just spinning a pad like that, you've got um, like centrifugal force is pushing the kind of fibers in a certain direction. So they all tend to flatten out one way. Whereas with these pads, you've got the oscillation. So the movement will go out and then back in again. And that keeps the fibers from just folding over one way. So the microfiber system works beautifully with the Rupes um, pads. So that, that would be a big reason for you picking this if you wanted to go down that route. Also, it's the, another big reason if you're starting out is what I was saying before about Rupes taking away all the complexity with all the color coding and everything working with their tools, which not a lot of people do. And it's important because it can be really complex when you're trying to get started with this, okay? And you know those, those, those pads and polishes and abrasives that they provide are gonna deliver you top class kind of professional results. Okay guys, so I want to wrap this review up now. I think I've got all the information I wanted to put out there on the on the Rupes um, LHR 15 ES Mark II. So whether you're a guy who's starting out looking to buy his first tool, or whether you're a professional de detailer looking to upgrade his tool, this has got to be one of the best quality dual action polishers that I've, I've used, okay? It's got all those extra features that we've talked about in the video. It's got the build quality, it's got the reliability, it comes with the warranty, okay? And as I said earlier on, the link for where you can go and buy it is in the description, which is important. And I'll put links to all the separate options around the deluxe and the standard and all those kits and stuff like that. This tool will deliver you the results you want. It will correct your paintwork. It will finish it down beautifully. It's an easy tool to use, okay? as your first kind of tool your first machine polish it will give you the most kind of capability that you want with the built-in safety and then you could look to increase your tool sets with the smaller um, LHR 75e Bigfoot Mini I think would accompany this tool beautifully for the tighter smaller more convex areas as well so this tool definitely gets a big thumbs up for me it's been a pleasure to use it and test it out and kind of you know see what it's all about so a big thank you as well to Clean and Shiny for loaning me the tool because without the loan of the tool I wouldn't be able to do the video so it's you know it's, it, it's a great tool to feature in the channel because it's so widely used and it's so well regarded so it Gets a big thumbs up from the Forensic Detailing channel. We shall, shall, see, we shall see you soon. Um, we've got some more brand reviews coming up shortly on, on the uh, channel. Loads of other detail, detailing related content. There's my little, little self plug. But um, yeah, really enjoyed doing this one. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Being on the road, sure ain't no fun.